Greetings, everyone. Well, last time we took a look at comics, trade paperback, collections of comics, and a book. Today, we're going to take a look at the new Blu-rays I got for the May 1st to 15th, 2016 time frame. Today, on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Okay, let's start right in on it here. So first up, uh, Twilight Time. You know I'm a big fan of Twilight Time. I like a lot of their stuff. Uh, there's no way I would ever collect everything that they put out because that would mean not eating for a very long time. But, uh, you know, occasionally there are certain titles that I just want to jump on and get into the collection because they're good stuff. Well, even better, more gooder -er stuff... Twilight Time recently celebrated their 5th anniversary and had a 5th anniversary sale. Now, this sale was only on the actual Twilight Time website. You would not get these deals on screen archives. It's strictly It was strictly from the Twilight Time website. And what the deal was, was, you know, normally, Twilight Time titles typically go for $29.99. Well, during the sale, they were all 10 bucks off. Well, not all, but most were 10 bucks off. So, $19.99. Well, can't pass up a deal like that. So I got three. So basically I got three Twilight Time titles for what would normally be the price of two. Not a bad deal at all. So what did I get? Well, let's take a look here. So first up, got something for the Ray Harryhausen collection. I hadn't actually even heard of this movie. And I was like, Ray Harryhausen, Charles Schneer, hell yeah, sign me up. Picked up Mysterious Island. Check that out. We got giant crabs and all kinds of cool stuff. So apparently this is a an encore edition, meaning they have released it before. It does come with a booklet as well. It's quite nice. And uh, add for more Twilight Time stuff. Got some artwork under the uh, under the disc there. I'll just show you. There we go. So we got some artwork under the disc. Some giant creatures. Very cool. Yeah, um, I've never seen this one before, so, uh, but yeah, Ray, Ray Harryhausen is one that I will always blind by if it's something I haven't seen because, well, because Ray Harryhausen, love his stuff, grew up with his stuff. He is and always has been and always will be a uh, special effects hero to me. All right, next up, picked up uh, something for the horror collection. Although it's not strictly horror, it's kind of a, a cross-genre movie. But when I saw the cast in this, I couldn't pass it up. We've got uh, Vincent Price, Christopher Lee, and Peter Cushing, in addition to some other people. <laughs> but those are the three that caught my eye. We have Scream and Scream Again. So it's described on the back as kind of a horror movie, kind of an espionage film, and in some sense a piece of, a piece of science fiction. So there you go, kind of a, a mixed genre thing. Again, one I had not seen, and uh, I, I do love all of those actors. So I thought, yes, I will get that. And then uh, look at this beautiful film noir-ish picture on the back. Just gorgeous. Very, very nice. Oh, I should tell you what extras are on here. Hold on a second. Extras. There actually are some, uh, you know, fairly decent extras on here. I mean, you got the booklet, which has some behind-the-scenes info, obviously. So special features, we've got the isolated score track, audio commentary with film historians Randall William Cook, C. Courtney Joyner, and Stephen C. Smith, uh, Ray Harryhausen on Mysterious Island, Islands of Mystery, TV spots, and original theatrical trailers. Very cool. We're on Scream and Scream Again. We have an isolated score track, of course. Audio commentary with film historians David DelVal and Tim Sullivan. Gentleman Gothic, Gordon Hessler at AIP. An interview with Uta Levka. Still Gallery, Radio Spot, and original theatrical trailer. So, I gotta say, with Twilight Time lately, they seem to be adding more robust extras packages, which is quite nice. I know a lot of people were a little annoyed that they were light on extras. Um... They would always have the isolated score track, of course, because they do it through Screen Archives, and Screen Archives is all about movie soundtracks. Uh, one of the reasons I like them. I need to pick up more soundtracks, actually. They've got some good stuff over there. But, um, uh, yeah, so, I mean, lately, they, but 
lately they've actually been adding a lot more in the way of extras. So next up, this is one I definitely wanted to grab because the sequel is available from Scream Factory. It's kind of an interesting uh, way this worked out. We have Count Yorga, Vampire. Yes. So the return of Count Yorga is available exclusively through Scream Factory. And Skinslip recently told me apparently Arrow Video is putting out a two-pack of both of them, but Region B only. So if you have a region-free Blu-ray player, that might be an alternate option. Otherwise, grab this from Twilight Time while you can and get the sequel from Scream Factory. So we take a look on the back there. Very nice. Um, yeah, I do love me some 70s vampire action. Love that artwork there. Very, very nice. And uh, I, I've heard of this series, been meaning to check it out for years, never have, so looking forward to it. So, I don't know, probably wait until I get the second one and do a double bill and do maybe a Fright Night Friday review or possibly Halloween, depending how long it takes for me to get the second one. Special features, this one has quite a lot actually. Um, got the isolated score track, audio commentary with film historians David DelVal and Tim Sullivan, My Dinner with Yorga, the Robert Quarry Rue Morgue interview, a reading by David DelVal and Tim Sullivan, Fangirl, radio tribute to Robert Quarry with Tim Sullivan, Still Gallery, the MGM archives, Still Gallery, the Tim Sullivan archives, and original theatrical trailer. So quite a lot of stuff there, man. Pretty cool. Next up, this is one that I've been wanting to get ever since I heard that they were doing it. Um... I'll just show you what it is first off. We have Star Trek, the Compendium. There you go. So what this is, is... Um, I need to find something here. Hold on a second. What this is... Oh, where the hell did it go? Damn it. Oh, there it is. Found it. <clears throat> I'll just show you quickly here. Uh, when it, this was when this came in the shrink wrap, it had this around it, which has a bunch of French on it, a bunch of French on it, a bunch of French on it. And you take this off, well, you lose the stuff on the back, but no more French. Hey. <laughs> yeah. All right. So anyway, I'll just add this to my collection of backings. Yes, I have a stack of those. Ah, stackings of backings. So, Star Trek The Compendium. Now, when uh, the original Star Trek came out, the original, the, the 2009 Star Trek came out, um, you yeah, know, it was a pretty decent package, lots of extras, lots of goodies on there, very nice, very satisfying set. When Star Trek Into Darkness came out, however, Paramount, in their infinite wisdom, decided to divvy up all the extras amongst various retailer exclusive editions. In fact, you would have had to purchase about six different editions across various retailers, online and otherwise, to get all of the extras. And there was an audio commentary, which you could only get as an iTunes download. What the fuck? Who doesn't put the audio commentary on the disc? It's ridiculous. Anyway, needless to say, fans were both annoyed and outraged. And, um... Yeah, Bill Hunt from the Digital Bits has been in contact with Paramount quite a bit over the years regarding their Star Trek releases. Sometimes they listen to his advice, sometimes they don't. For example, with the 50th anniversary this year, we're getting yet more re-releases of the garbage transfers of the first 10 films. The only one that we're actually getting a re-release, like remaster slash re-release of that's done properly is Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. So we're getting like a you know beautiful 4K remaster of that. That is one that I will definitely be picking up because that's the one that they've done properly. Um, and it is giving us both cuts as well on that, by the way. Um, but as for the other nine, especially you know, one through six, my other than one through six minus two. So it's like I'm doing algebra or something. Um, those ones are in desperate need of new transfers and editions that actually have the alternate cuts, specifically of 1 and 6. There's like three different cuts of 1. There's two different cuts of 6. Um, but the, in particular, the transfers are just horrible. I mean, they're textbook examples of dnr into oblivion garbage transfers. Please, for the love of fuck, do not waste your money on those. All of the editions we have on Blu-ray are the same goddamn discs including the 50th anniversary ones. It's the same discs, repackaged again. <sighs> anyway, we're not talking about those. We're talking about this. 
Star Trek The Compendium. So Star Trek, Star Trek The Compendium <laughs> was a direct kind of apology to fans by pulling together, compendiuming, if you will, all of the extras from all of the different editions of both movies into one place. So this set has every single extra and the commentary on the disc, oh my god, um, for both movies, 2000, the 2009 Star Trek and Into Darkness. So if you want a nice handy-dandy place to get everything without having to track down a bajillion different editions, this is the way to go, right here. And uh, so I've had my eye on this for a while. It was usually priced around 30 bucks. I saw it on sale recently for $17.99 at Best Buy, and I was like, yeah, I can do 18 bucks. So grab that, and, uh, and it's quite nice. I mean, it's basically you've got one disc with the movie there, and then a disc of extras for both of them. And there's special features on the movie discs as well, and then all the special features, all the remaining special features on the extras discs. So, um, yeah, pretty cool. So that is those two movies done right. If you want to make sure you have everything in one handy-dandy place, the compendium is the way to go. Plus, it's kind of a nice cover. You know, you get the nice embossed cover, matte finish, kind of kind of muted glossy on the... Uh, you can sort of see it. Like, it's not really glossy, but kind of metallic like that. So that's kind of nice. And then you get the Enterprise there, which is all bumpy and stuff. Alrighty, last, but most certainly not least, I think everybody and their dog picked this one up. I did not see this in theaters because I have an eight-year-old, and it's hard to get away to a movie by myself, plus, uh, especially when it's something that I know I'm going to snap up on Blu-ray as soon as it comes out, so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to wait for the Blu-ray, check that out. Uh, we have... Deadpool! Yes, at long last, an R-rated an Marvel movie. How long have we waited for this? Yeah, um, I'm going to actually do a review of this. I, just, I watched it as soon as I got it home. But I, I will just say this. What fun. What a freaking fun as hell movie. Um, so much fun. I, I really enjoyed it. And I, I, I see some people criticizing the, the juvenile humor and whatnot. And it's like... Just chillax, all right? Jesus Christ. Learn to just cut loose and have some fun, will ya? This is Deadpool from the comics. This is what he's like in the comics. We got the comics Deadpool on screen. There's really nothing to complain about. If you don't like the movie, you don't like the comics. You just don't like the character. And that's fine. That's fine. But don't shit on the movie, because we need more stuff like this. This is a movie that is true to the comic book origins. And we need more of that. So let's give some credit where credit's due. Uh, big hats off to Ryan Reynolds for pushing to get this made for the past 10 years and for just killing it as the main character. I mean, he is fantastic. So there we got... Uh, it's a beautiful slipcover, by the way. It's actually all textured. And, uh, you know, it even has sort of the leathery feel of the mask there. And, the, and it's all textured there. You can poke his eyeballs. It's great. Um... So we take a look inside. It's basically uh, just a Blu-ray DVD combo disc. But in terms of extras, this is everything we wanted in the extras pack. You've actually got, uh, what is it? you got deleted and extended scenes with optional audio commentary by director Tim Miller. Gag reel from comics to screen to screen. Um, I should mention the making of documentary on this. 80 minutes long. It's an 80 minute long making of documentary. That's how you do a fucking making of documentary. Uh, you got a gallery of concept art, costumes, storyboards, previs, and stunt viz. Deadpool's Fun Sack. Now, the, the description on the back does not give that nearly enough credit. Deadpool's Fun Sack is basically every single promo, teaser, uh, you know, PSA, everything that they did during the absolutely brilliant, brilliant marketing campaign. Um, and, and it's more or less in chronological order, like the order that it was originally released. So you can see how the marketing campaign evolved uh, over the course of it. So it's all those funny little things with uh, Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool, you know, the PSA, the Touch Yourself Tonight, um, the, the thing with the Kid Avengers, and uh, basically in response to why it's not for kids. Um, the, the, the teaser for the trailer in which he says the, one of my favorite lines in the promos is I from the studio that inexplicably sewed his fucking mouth shut the first time. <laughs> love it. Love it. The self-referential marketing campaign 
just so much fun. Anyway, it's all there. It's all there. Um, now there is a still gallery of, uh, of posters and such. There's, there's a few posters that I would have liked to see in there. For example, there's the one that was released, uh, shortly before the release of the movie, which made it look like it was going to be a love story, like just a, a some romantic drama. <laughs> but, uh, unfortunately that one's not on there. I don't know why, but, uh, some of the other stuff is. Uh, the main thing, though, is to have those promos and trailers because they are just a hoot, an absolute hoot. And you get both the green band and red band versions of the trailers. Anyone who saw the green band ones knows that Deadpool comes on at the end and says, do you want some red band goodness? Then go to my website, blah, blah, blah. That's all on there. Uh, and then you've got uh, two audio commentaries. you got a commentary by Ryan Reynolds and screenwriters Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick and audio commentary by director Tim Miller and Deadpool co-creator comics artist Rob Liefeld. So there you go. Very, very cool. So if you are a fan of Deadpool, um, you will not be disappointed with this Blu-ray. There was a Steelbook, which all the scalpers immediately st uh, snapped up and began selling for premium prices on eBay. So fuck all those guys. You're ruining the collecting community. Will you please all just fuck off and die? Thank you. Uh, that said, I actually prefer the, uh, much like the Star Wars, I actually prefer the regular slipcover anyway, because I think it's nicer. It's got this nice texture and everything. So I'm fine. Um, I'm fine. We're all fine here. Uh, no, honestly, I don't care that I missed the Steelbook. It's, it's, it would be nice to have, but I mean, it's not, you know, uh, th there's nothing in it that's different from this. It's just different packaging. And, uh, you know, I I'm very picky about what Steelbooks I get anyway. So, um, in this case, I probably, even if I had the choice, like if it was still in stock, I probably would have just gone with the regular slipcover anyway. So, that's that. Uh, same with the Star Wars one. I didn't find the Star Wars Steelbook particularly appealing, so... I went with the regular slipcover, which I think looks way nicer. Um, talk about The Force Awakens, if people are watching this a million years from now. Um, yeah, so that's it for the Blu-rays. Uh, not a ton of stuff. Uh, these were, I mean, these arrived in the past two weeks, but I actually ordered them back in April. Um, so really, I guess technically, I only bought two Blu-rays this, this month. Um, yeah, it's a tight money month, so not a lot of stuff this, um, this time period. Uh, probably won't be a ton more stuff until June. Might pick, I'll probably pick up a couple of things. Like there's, there's a few things coming out this month that I really want. Uh, one of the big ones being uh, Doctor Who story number 32, The Un Underwater Menace, which is the last ever release of the classic series. The final two, excuse me, existing episodes of the two missing episodes of the story done with photo snap reconstructions and apparently really crappy, but whatever. At least we get the last two episodes beautifully remastered. Um, and they're also the earliest existing second Doctor episodes, so kind of important to have those. Alrighty, well that is it for this update. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, see, aren't you glad I did this in two parts? It would have been like a 45 minute long update otherwise <laughs> if I'd done it with the comics. And uh, splitting them up means I can talk about the things a little bit more, so there you go. Um, so yeah, some pretty cool stuff for the collection. Some good goodies for the horror, some goodies for Ray Harryhausen, goodies for sci-fi, and goodies for comics. Yeah goodies. Alrighty, big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. Thanks, Patreon sponsors. Hi, how's it going? Uh, special thanks to Kyle Pellegrini, still my highest level sponsor. Thank you very much, dude. Really appreciate the support. And, uh, yeah, so we'll see you next time. Till then, thanks for watching, and sayonara. buy the same thing all the time. It's called supporting the line. Very simple. But you already bought the individual issues. I did. It's called supporting the line. Supporting it. Showing my support. Like a jock strap. It's all about support. Okay, dokily. <laughs> <clears throat> Welcome back. Okay, so let's start right in on it here. So first up, I, uh, yeah.